Tonight, I'm going to rank the films of Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, you clicked on the film. Uh, video, rather. Excuse me. Film. Obviously, you clicked on the video, so you know what we're doing tonight. We are going to take the films of one Quentin Tarantino, and we're going to rank them from worst to first. So, uh, yeah, man, this is my favorite director, so this ought to be a good one. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. I'm going to try to keep it under 30 minutes. That's my new goal these days. So bear with me, guys. But I thank you for joining me. I appreciate everybody's time. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a great week. And I hope you're looking forward to Turkey Day. Go get me some turkey. Go put some potatoes on it. Put it on some bread and make me a sandwich. I'm so excited, dude. I can't wait. Before I jump into this list... I'm going to throw a shout out and a special, special thank you to uh, our very first sponsor over at whitecupentertainment.com. Uh, these dudes are awesome, man. They're a local small business like mine, providing me with this lovely, spectacular Scrooston shirt, boy. Come on, man. Get some. Dude, that shirt is fly, bro. I haven't used that word in 23 years, dude. That's how dope this shirt is. Uh, they are a hip hop and like geek culture mishmatch uh, streetwear clothing company. Stickers, shirts, hoodies, and the like, man. Go check them out over at uh, whitecupent.com. Link down below. They're really good dudes, guys. So support small business, shop local. Check them out. They did us a big favor. Sent me some lovely merchandise. Uh, I, I, I literally rock it anyways. I've had their shirts well before that they sponsored my show. Uh, these dudes are awesome, and their clothing is really comfortable. Like, legit comfortable shirts, man. And, and that, 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 that's important. So check them out. Let's jump into some Quentin Tarantino talk. Some Tarantino talk. Eating the Totinos while talking Quentin Tarantino. That's, yeah, sorry. That was dumb. So, um, disclaimer, all right? Because I know a lot of elitists out there are going to tell me I'm wrong about some shit. This is a subjective list, man. If you don't like it, write your own. Let me know what you think. Send me your list. I'd love to tell you how shitty it is. I really wouldn't do that. But uh, maybe I would. Depends on what the list was about, you know? It, it really is. Uh, but nonetheless, man, this is a subjective list. This is my list. I love Quentin Tarantino. I love all of his movies. Um, he's my favorite director by far. I just and it's not because he's artsy and, and his films are great. It's not because he's got great films. It's, it's no man. He's got awesome movies that I like to watch and they're rewatchable and I I catch things in every movie that I didn't catch the time before. So, um, without further ado, I will be typing a little bit on this video. So my apologies. Uh, I want to make sure that I have any information correct before I start um, spouting things off on the video. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna do. Let's see, I'm going to do the top probably six or seven movies, you know, in his, in his, cause he's got nine slash 10 that he, that he's directed, which is the list that I've compiled. <clears throat> so I would like to talk about the first, probably seven of those, and then we'll do a little interlude of sorts. And then I'll give you guys my top three. Okay. So starting with number 10 is going to be 1997's Jackie Brown. All right? So, one of the things about a list like this is that this could be the bottom of the barrel for Tarantino, and that is well above most everybody else. So just because Jackie Brown's on my number 10 slot on Tarantino's list doesn't mean that it's not a movie that just absolutely annihilates the majority of the field. So, um, Jackie Brown's a good one, man. It's like, it's a crime story, man. It's got a bunch of great actors. I, uh, forgot that Michael Keaton was in this until I was watching a thing with him, an actors on actors video that he was, and he mentioned it and I was like, Oh dude, Keaton was in a Tarantino flick. That's right. He was in Jackie Brown. He was a cop, I believe if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, I like this one, man. It puts Tarant uh, excuse me, puts Robert De Niro in a weird role that's not 
I don't know. It, honestly, it kind of reminded me of his role in Cape Fear. It's like he was brought back for that character. But uh, yeah, man, Jackie Brown's a good crime story, man. A good a good heist movie. I really enjoyed it a lot. I've actually watched it probably five times. I, I, I do love that movie. Um, number nine, in my personal opinion, is going to be Kill Bill Volume 2, leaving number eight, Kill Bill Volume 1. Uh, I put these two together because I couldn't imagine separating them, and he doesn't separate them. He calls them one movie, so I'm going to put them at, 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 at eight and nine, uh, respectively. Uh, Kill Bill, let's see, Volume 1 came out in 2003. I think Volume 2 came out a year or two later. I, I love these movies. I hear a lot of people give them a lot of crap. There is so much going on in, in Kill Bill. I will give it this. Kill Bill Volume 2 is inferior to Volume 1 by quite a bit. Volume 1, man, it kicks ass and takes names, man. That movie is awesome. But... You can't have one without the other. So uh, I really enjoy Kill Bill. I love all the fight choreography that they do. The overdone blood is really great. I like how he switches in between styles of movies, and some of it's animated, some of it's black and white, some of it's I don't know, man. It's 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 some of it's just absolutely beautifully shot. All the stuff that he did with Lucy Liu when they're, when it's snowing outside and she's fighting Uma Thurman might be one of my top 10 scenes of all time. That is, I love that. That that changed me, all right? That was a great, great thing. But uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, really, really good revenge um, kung fu movie. So good. I mean, if you haven't seen Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, well, A, I recommend it, but if you haven't seen it and you don't do violence or, or, or blood, then skip it because it's ultra bloody, ultra violent. And ultra awesome, man. Uma Thurman is the shit, and uh, there there was a lot of a lot of controversy surrounding that movie. To be honest, that I think it was at one point said that he Quentin Tarantino as and he forced Uma Thurman to do a stunt she didn't really want to do, and it hurt her. And she's got permanent injuries from it. I don't know, man. There's a lot of controversy, but I mean Tarantino's a controversial dude. He does a lot of things that people don't like, but he continuously prov uh, prov uh, presents us with with amazing movies, so we tend to look the other way. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just a fact. So, you know, I'm guilty of it as, as anybody else is. Let's see here. Number seven. It's going to be Django Unchained. All right? Django Unchained, while I love that movie, let's see here. It got a ton of awards, I think, or at least got some. Django Unchained... Came out in 2012. That's not that old. That, that movie's been out only a few years. So, the middle of this list is where things get really muddy for me. A lot of his movies fall in the middle of this. Alright? The last couple and the first couple, not too hard for me to figure out. Alright? The, 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 the middle of it's kind of hard for me to figure out in order. So, um, quite honestly, I, 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 I got kind of stuck on this part. But Django Unchained, I mean, what? let's see. Two years before the Civil War, Django, played by Jamie Foxx. Man, the, the people that act in this dude's movies, ridiculous. Uh, a slave finds himself accompanying an unorthodox German bounty hunter named Dr. King Schultz, who's played by Christopher Waltz, on a mission to capture the vicious, the vicious brittle brothers. Um, another revenge movie set in the Civil War times. It's got Leonardo DiCaprio, got Jamie Foxx, Christopher Waltz. Just a slew of other people in there. Tons of bad language, lots of violence, a uh, bunch of real uncomfortable conversation with the N-word in it, which honestly, that takes some gall, takes some nuts. Got a hand to the guy, man. He makes movies that are probably period accurate. Uh, I couldn't do that. But I love this movie. I've seen it probably three times, maybe. I don't know what it is about it that makes me veer to another movie when it's on the docket and I'm like, okay, what do I want to watch? Well, I want to watch this, this, this. But I tend to go the other direction on Django sometimes. And uh, I probably should. I need to give it another watch. It's a really great movie. It's, it's, it's definitely... Uh, I don't know. It far supersedes a lot of other movies that I've seen out there. Tons of movies that are nowhere near as good as that. So, But uh, number six for me... 
would be the Hateful Eight. I don't know if it's actually called the Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight. This is the one that I had the hardest time with. This and Django. I couldn't figure out where to put them. But I, I decided I like The Hateful Eight better because I like the how, how the movie ends. Um, the Hateful Eight is a movie... Let's see. Let's, that, that came out in... should have written this down before time. I'm sorry, guys. Pardon me. <clears throat> Man, I can't wait for Thanksgiving. 2015. So that's, that's, that's a newer one. Hateful Eight came out 2015. It's got tons of people, man. Samuel L. Jackson, Kurt Russell, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Channing Tatum's in this movie, Tim Roth's in this movie. Just, I mean, I'm talking like, dude, everybody on the planet was in this movie. But there was a good twist in it. I'm not going to ruin the movie for you. Uh, very violent. It looks dreary. It's got a... The movie has a weird feel throughout it. When you... when you, oh, Sam Jackson's in this one again. He's in everything, man. Um, when it starts off, you don't really know how you're feeling, right? About 15, 20 minutes in, you're like, oh, this is going to get bad. And it just has a feeling about it. There's just this bleak feeling. And it goes from, like, pretty good place to a little worse, a little worse. It doesn't really get any better. I love it, man. Very violent again. Lots and lots of foul language. So if you, you know, if you, that's a theme in Tarantino movies. But, um, I'm trying not to ruin these films for you guys. I, I, I'm assuming most of y'all have seen most of, if not all of these. But I, I know there's people out there that haven't seen some of them. So I'm trying to not just crap on somebody's Tarantino plate. But, uh, The Hateful Eight, man, I thought it was an awesome movie. I've watched that one about three times. And there's a bunch of stuff that when you rewatch it, you, you, I, I think that's a theme with Quentin Tarantino is as you rewatch his films, you learn more and more about them. You get closer to the characters. You see little things that you didn't see before. A lot of the movies are connected in ways you didn't know they were connected in. Uh, I love the fact that Tarantino, as much as he's a badass filmmaker, he's also a kind of guy that does make films. And he's a, he's a movie junkie. This guy's got the best taste in soundtracks and movies I've ever seen in my life. I don't see how you could possibly be a fan of movies and film. And not just absolutely love everything he does. It's 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 you'd be hard pressed to convince me he's not top three of all time, in my opinion. I'm gonna say top three because he's my favorite, and there's room for arguments on that or who might be better than him. But dude, come on, give me two that are just flat out better than him, and we're we're gonna argue all day. That leads us to number five on my list. Number five would be his first film, Reservoir Dogs. Let's see here. My memory is super bad. I am so sorry, guys. I had a bunch of this stuff in my head, and then I started talking, and it all went... Let's see. Reservoir Dogs came out in 92. Okay, yeah. Man. Let's see. That's 27 years now? My goodness. Reservoir Dogs is coming up on its 30th anniversary. Dude, that's so crazy. Uh, Reservoir Dogs... I call it a heist movie. A lot of people don't because it revolves around post-heist most of the movie, like almost all of it. It's a heist movie, dude. It's got some of the best dialogue that I've ever seen in a movie. And it definitely has top five, if not top three, soundtracks to any movie ever. The scene with the ear. Yeah, that, that, that one got me. That was gnarly. But it was awesome. But this has got a couple of really good twists. It's very Tarantino-y. But it's his first film. There's a lot. It's rough around the edges, man. But I love Reservoir Dogs. I've seen Reservoir Dogs probably 10 or 12 times, and while I don't rush to throw it on right now, if my wife wanted to watch it tonight, I'd definitely be like, cool, Reservoir Dogs is, is, is good, because it's, it's one of those movies that you're like, I don't know, man, but the moment it starts playing, you start quoting shit with it, and start talking with the movie, because you've seen it so many times, and you love it so much, and then before you know it, credits are rolling, and you're like, yes, satisfied. My number four is the Grindhouse flick Death Proof. All right? Say what you want about this. Uh, I had a hard time not putting this quite a bit higher, to be honest. I love this movie. Death Proof is one of those movies that... Okay, so it's, it's Grindhouse, right? But it was intentionally made that way, and he knows how to make those kind of movies. Him and Robert Rodriguez know what they're doing, so when he made a Grindhouse movie intentionally, it worked. A lot of people try that, and a lot of people fail. And then the people that do it the best are the people that don't mean to do it. So the fact that he did it so well is pretty amazing. 
Grindhouse has a very slow first act. I would say maybe even second act. But the payoff is so good. I, all right. I'm biased because I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston. If, in case y'all didn't know this by now. Grindhouse was... I'm not Grindhouse, excuse me. Uh, Death Proof was filmed in Austin. I think exclusively. I believe the whole movie was filmed there. So there's a lot of Austin and Texas stuff in the movie, so I really like that about it. It makes me want to watch it more and more and more. The characters have a very Texas feel to them. I like the dialogue. I like that it's mostly a female cast. It's a little different than what he usually does. I like how he utilizes them, and I like that it switches from cast A to cast B without a whole lot of explanation and without a whole lot of warning. The movie's really good. It's got my personal favorite car scenes. It, how do I explain this? It's not my fa favorite chase ever, because it's just, just not. But it's absolutely my favorite car wreck of all time, and there's a ton of great car wrecks in movies. This one's my favorite one. If I wanted to go, I might even do a top 10. You know what? Write that down. Top 10 car scenes. Like car slash chase scenes in movies. So I might do a new list, a new video with like top 10. Because I got a couple that, that would be perfect for a list like that. I think that list could be actually quite long. But Death Proof has got... It's a it's a it's a grindhouse revenge flick, but it's kind of a horror flick at the same time. It's got a very '80s feel to it. It's man, the card is badass. the The wreck is so crazy. It's got a couple of the best wreck scenes I've ever seen, and it's like, I don't know, I really really love it. And and I wasn't sure honestly. I I I had it a little lower on the list for a while, then I had it a little higher on the list. So I went back and rewatched it, and it fits real nice at slot four. Uh, Death Proof is definitely in my top five Tarantino movies ever. It will never leave, I don't think. But it's a really good movie. Uh, before I go to the top three, guys, I'm gonna leave y'all hanging for a minute. We're gonna go for a couple of honorable mentions. Yeah. And we'll see if you guys can remember this later on down the road when I do a top 10 movies of all time. Because that'll be a subjective list of my top 10 favorite movies. Honorable mention number one is going to be the Oliver Stone directed, written by Quentin Tarantino, Natural Born Killers. Alright? If you have not seen Natural Born Killers, stop this video and go watch it. It's important. It's, it's, it's an emergency. Go watch it. It's fucking awesome. The movie's amazing. Let's see. It's got Woody Harrelson, Julianne, Julie, Juliette Lewis, excuse me, Dust, from Dust Till Dawn fame. Uh, Juliette Lewis, uh, Woody Harrelson, Robert Downey Jr. is in it. A whole bunch of stuff, but it's it's basically like, like Sid and Nancy and Bonnie and Clyde on mescaline and acid. Just a murdering people. But, uh, Really great movie, but it's not directed by Tarantino, so it had to be an honorable mention. And then my other honorable mention will be my absolute number one favorite movie of all time. This is, you know what? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to misspeak here. I don't want to know the year of it. Hold on. Uh, I wonder if anybody out there knows what movie I'm going with here. Oh, my goodness. What year was this in? 93. Okay. Uh, Tony Scott's directed, written by Quentin Tarantino. True Romance. That's my favorite movie. Um, Alabama is a name that I almost brought up for my daughter. I, uh, man, this movie's so good from front to back. And the thing is, is it's one of those movies that you, you, it's, it's really, really, really great. And then you, you kind of like shelve it for a while. And then, for instance, I was with my wife and she had never seen it. And I was like, oh, let's, let's watch it. It's, it's not horror. And she's like, thank goodness. And so <laughs> I popped it in. And quite literally, within two minutes of it, I was like, oh, I forgot how much I love this movie. And I just geeked out and got all nerdy for, uh, well, what's his face? Clarence. Um, come on, man. I'm losing my mind today. Uh, <laughs> Christmas later, dude. Oh, my goodness. I got so much going on, guys. I am so sorry. But, uh, yeah, so those are my two... Honorable mentions for this list. I had to talk about them on this list at some point because they were 
pivotal movies in my life. They were very important, and they were penned by Tarantino. I thought they deserved to be on this list at some somewhere, somehow. That leaves us with our top three, guys. All right. So my number three, Inglorious Bastards. All right. Up until a while back, maybe three months ago or so, this would have been number 10 on my list. Partly because everybody talks about how great it is and wants to put it up there as their number one all the time. I hear that a lot. And I'm just a buck the system kind of guy. Part of it's because it's in a lot of it's in German and I absolutely can't stand the German language and I don't know any of it. It's just an ugly language to me. So I gotta hear some shit I don't like. I gotta watch Nazi dicks. Now granted they're getting smashed, I get that, but like I don't know. I just I just didn't like that everybody loved it so much, and I didn't because I don't like German. All right. Um, I sat down like an adult and rewatched it, and was like, ah, crap. This has to go somewhere really high on my list. I couldn't put it at number one, but I had to put it at top three. Inglorious Bastards is admittedly a much better film than I once thought. Uh, you know, Americans kicking the shit out of Nazis. Brad Pitt's in it. It's awesome. Uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of really good scenes in it. If you don't have time to sit down and, and read subtitles, I would highly recommend that you put this on the back burner for a while. But if you got the time to sit down and enjoy a movie where you're reading the subtitles, you'll get a lot out of it. It's very gratifying to watch these dudes get the shit kicked out of them. A la a baseball bat a couple times even. It's a really good movie. I underestimated it. I don't know why. I just, I remember the first time I saw it, I didn't really care for it. And then it just kind of got downhill from there. And then I'm a stubborn guy. So, uh, But I'm trying to get over those kind of ways of thinking. And be a little more mature with things. And open my mind up about things. Uh, but yeah. Number three. Inglorious Bastards. Number two. The uh, 2019 hit Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There's a show, uh, uh, poster over there. <laughs> um Recency bias was making me want to put this at number one, but it's just not the case. I'm sure you guys have figured out what number one is by now. But Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I loved that movie. I loved it. I, I watched it, and I loved it. And I didn't care that it was slow. I loved the dialogue. I loved the relationship between Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. I thought it was one of my favorite bromances of all time in movie. I like the... Tarantino take on history it was awesome and the payoff of this movie the last 15 minutes or so were so good that you could tack on an extra 30 to 60 minutes of dialogue driven other stuff and I'd still be good with it because that's how badass the ending of this movie was if you have not seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again stop what you're doing and go watch that movie it is so good and as for how he portrays Bruce Lee dude it's a movie that's all I gotta say about it. Uh, I heard Bruce Lee was kind of a prick sometimes, but he's also a great man. Nobody's perfect. It's just a movie. People need to get over it. That leads me to number one. In my opinion, the best Quentin Tarantino movie thus far. Pulp Fiction. Okay, so one, when I said the little, you know, we're gonna talk about Quentin Tarantino thing. I wanted to have the. So I was going to put the music in into the video. I don't know enough about the rules about that yet. That's why I didn't do it. I wanted to have a little more... Uh, I've been putting pictures up, but I'm not, I'm not doing any video yet. I'm learning the rules so I don't get in any trouble on YouTube. I don't want to have to restart something or re-record something or, or any of that stuff. I'd like to just keep uh, what I've got going going. <laughs> I've worked really hard to get where I'm at, even though it's very low on the totem pole. Uh, I've worked very hard to not be on the very bottom. So, uh, Pulp Fiction, my personal favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. I don't even necessarily think it's his best. I, it's just my favorite. I I love this movie so much. I can't. Okay, it changed my life when I watched this movie. I mean, even even Sam Jackson's wallet, that BMF wallet, just everything about Pulp Fiction is so good. It doesn't make any sense. The timeline's all jacked up. I always say, I got my favorite part of Pulp Fiction, and then I tell somebody what it is, and then it ends up being three or four different things. All right. 
I've said this a hundred times. I think this is actually my favorite part. Whenever John Travolta and Uma, Thur Uma Thurman go to the, the, the go eat dinner, and she orders her food, and she goes, and I'll take a five dollar shake. And he's like rolling a cigarette, and he goes, "Did you just order a five dollar milkshake?" And she's like, "Uh huh." And he goes, "Milk, ice cream, and blender, whatever." And he goes, and he goes, he goes, "That's it." And she goes, "Uh huh." And he goes, "There's no bourbon or anything in it." And she's like, "Nope." And then it comes in, and they're eating or whatever. And he goes, "Can I taste that?" <laughs> and she goes, "Yeah, sure." And she slides it over, and he goes, he takes a drink of the milkshake, and he's like, he's like, "Uh, god damn." He goes, "Uh." Uh, I don't know if that's worth $5, but it's pretty fucking good. And just, I don't know, man. I love that movie so much. Just that part of it is so Quentin Tarantino to me. It's so me to me. It's it's when John Travolta was the shit and not making movies like The Fanatic. Although, I, I haven't watched it yet, but I, I'm very, very, I want to really bad. Um, but yeah, Pulp Fiction... That's my list, folks. That is my list. I'll give you a quick rundown so you, in case you were, I don't know, not paying any attention. Number 10, Jackie Brown. Number 9, number 8, go together. That's Kill Bill Volume 2 at number 9. Kill Bill Volume 1 at number 8. Number 7, Django Unchained. Number 6, Hateful Eight. Number 5, Reservoir Dogs. Number 4, Grindhouse Death Proof. Honorable mentions were True Romance and Natural Born Killers, both penned by Quentin Tarantino but not directed by. Number three, Inglorious Bastards. Number two, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Number one, Pulp Fiction. That is my list, guys. That is how I rank them worst to first. I'd love to know what you think. I hope you guys stuck with me through this video. This is a little longer than the last couple that I've made. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, but if you have made it till the end, A, thank you. Uh, B, please guys, don't forget to hit the, the, the like button if you like what you saw. Hit the subscribe button if you want to hear more, if you want to see more. The most important thing is comments. Let me know how you're thinking, guys. Let me know what you what you thought of the video. Let me know if you got... I want to know your list. I want to know what you're thinking about my list. Uh, regardless if you like it or not, I'd like to know. Uh, conversation is very important to this uh, growing community that we have here. So thank you so much, guys. If you want to support us on any of the social media platforms my handle is at fun stuff comics tx and if you would like to support us via patreon we do giveaways uh, as often as possible i try to do monthly and i'm fixing to start doing patreon exclusive videos once every two weeks as well uh you can go to patreon.com forward slash fun stuff comics tx where for just a couple of bucks a month you can have a lot of input on my videos and i uh, you'll be on my credit roll as well at the end of the video uh, but thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a great night. I hope you have a great holiday. Enjoy Thanksgiving with your family and friends. I hope everybody has a great time. Um, yeah, man. I got a bunch of you guys that I'm thinking of. I can't wait to see, can't wait to see all my buddies pretty soon here. Uh, yeah. R.I.P. Poncho, man. I miss you, dude. Uh, yeah. Until next time, guys. Y'all have a great night. Peace.